Hello, I'm Ari. And I'm Claudine. Welcome to Proving the Negative. We're a podcast all about exploring the different sides of cybersecurity, from political science to computer science, international relations to mathematics. Join us as we talk to our friends about the work they do. Really short intro today. We have Andrew, the director of our CBT. Louise used to be a student and has gone on to become a researcher. Kevin is the chief executive officer of a company called Cyjax. They do threat intelligence, but more importantly, he is a member of our academic board. Just before we dive in this week, we're going to talk a lot today about different disciplines and what that means is subject area. My discipline is computer science. Claudine has many. The disciplines she comes from are political science and law. For the purpose of this discussion, interdisciplinary is the integration of knowledge and different methods. Multidisciplinary People from different subject areas working together, they draw from each other's knowledge. Not necessarily the integration, it's just being around each other. We mix up these words, but that's a general guide as to what the specific differences are. We hope you have almost as much fun listening to this as we did recording it. Without any further ado, let's get this show on the road. I'm Louise. I started in the cybersecurity CDT in 2014, looking at how to present threat and monitoring data to security practitioners working in security operations centers. I was looking at using alternatives to visual techniques, so in particular using sound. I've moved on to being a postdoctoral researcher where I've been looking at systemic cybersecurity risks and how to model interdependencies that there are between organizations, how different attacker strategies might play against different defender strategies. I've also been looking at security for some of the alternative system structures that are starting to be used more and more, in particular distributed ledgers like blockchain. I would define cybersecurity as protecting computing systems at the core, and often that boils down to protecting confidentiality, integrity and availability of data and systems. There's a lot of complexity behind that. There's a lot of different types of systems. There's a lot of connections and dependencies between systems and there's a lot of different stages to protect. It sounds simple, it's about protecting computing systems, but actually there's a lot of complexity behind it. I'm Kevin McMahon, I'm a member of the CDT Advisory Board. I started in cybersecurity back in 2012 where I founded a cyber threat intelligence company and since then we've been helping UK government organisations and private sector companies to develop their cybersecurity capabilities internally and better understand the risk that they are facing as a result of problems that are presented by cybersecurity. One of the biggest challenges that we have at the moment is the development of recruitment pipelines. There's such a skill shortage out there that it's difficult to maintain and keep staff with the necessary skills within your organisation. There's a bit of a race on at the moment from some of the larger, better funded organisations to snap up as much of the talent as they possibly can, which really isn't leaving too much for the rest of us. Traditionally, cybersecurity has been about protecting devices, technologies within organization. More recently, we've started to understand and embrace the wider scope of the problem and how it impacts every area of the business. Cybersecurity can present itself in the form of physical risk to employees, to assets, really setting benchmarks in protecting the the brand reputation of organizations. There is a lot of coverage that cybersecurity now relates to within business and within technology. There's a number of challenges as a result of that, which certainly touches upon the multidisciplinary work that um, we're here to discuss today. Hi, I'm Andrew Martin. I'm Professor of System Security, University of Oxford. I've been the founder and director of the Centre for Doctoral Training in Cybersecurity. I first encountered, I guess, what we'd call computer security near the very beginning of my career in 1990 and spent a lot of time looking at very technical aspects of of how we make computers secure and even started teaching that stuff to master's students just after the turn of the millennium. It was immediately very clear that you could have all the good technology in the world and if people didn't use it right or didn't understand it or had their own priorities that were at odds with those of what you were trying to do with the technology, you didn't end up with a good security outcome. I quickly recruited someone to teach the course that became known as People and Security. Things have rather snowballed from there. We've tried very much to keep a multidisciplinary approach to security across what we do in 
in the computer science department and more widely across the university. That snowballed up to, to what we call Cybersecurity Oxford. And then the opportunity came along to set up the Centre for Doctoral Training, where really the priority was that we would recruit students from right across the disciplines, maybe a majority from computer science, but plenty with other backgrounds in law or in social policy or in business or in economics, with the aim that they would, they'd probably end up specialising in topics, research topics that were close to their, their original discipline, but they would have the experience of learning together and learning across disciplines about how to bring diverse insights together to solve cybersecurity problems. We knew that was going to be tough, but it seems to have worked. One of my goals was that whilst nobody could learn everything, I would hope that those who graduate from the CDT at least know what they don't know and know that there are more perspectives to bring than the one that they specialize in. It's been really good to see lots of students growing in confidence and in understanding security from a very rounded perspective. That excites me. So that's still my priority, looking for new ways to do that, even though I myself still stick to working out how to make the technology more secure. As regards defining cybersecurity, um, it's something I've asked each new cohort of students to do as they came into the Centre for Doctoral Training. It's been quite interesting to see how it's evolved. In the very first cohort, students seem to split into groups with a very technical view. You ask them to define cybersecurity and they started talking about networks and servers, whereas others with a social background started talking about people and how they felt secure. By the time we got to the fifth and sixth cohorts, people had a much more rounded view. I think cybersecurity has become understood as something that has to do with how we harness technology to build security in the space, in the real world context that is cyberspace, because somehow cyber is real and it's where we live, even though it's also virtual. And that's, that's a paradox, I suppose, but it's the place where cybersecurity sits today. Claudine, part of the uh, 2018 CDT cohort. My priorities are actually how individuals experience harm related to the content that they interact with and that they consume, specifically looking at more mundane types of content, the everyday content that uh, can create a significant amount of unseen harm, right? Or these sort of small incremental harms that we experience just from everyday social media use. In terms of looking at you know, how that relates to cybersecurity, I, I take a slightly broader view of cybersecurity, I think, than the more traditional definition of uh, you know, securing information and systems. Given how integrated um, humans are in the use of technology, particularly around given smart devices and how much we use our devices with one another and with cyberspace, as Andrew said, cyber is, uh, is real at this point, I take a slightly broader view and look at the some of the mitigation strategies that individuals can use to protect themselves from psychological and emotional harm online, and also that providers of you know, user-to-user services can also implement to protect their users from harm, be they technical or, or just in terms of guidelines or community standards. I'm Arianna, CDT16. We've, we've done intros on the podcast before. So where did I start in a very dark room, lots of flashing lights, lots of cables, so a bit of a network monkey. At the moment, it's quite different. I have worked with medical researchers and people with very rare genetic conditions. I've looked at how we build systems. How do you architect choice when you make consent options? Because informed consent is a conversation we have about how we use data, how we collect data, how we protect data. So my priorities now, rather than the, the bare bones and the, and the cables, boxes and switches and routers, it's much more about the responsibility of the expert, so the cybersecurity expert, in creating a culture where people feel safe to disclose mistakes they make or report something without fear of getting punished. How do you respond when something happens? How do you pull everyone together 
and leverage the expertise that they have so that you're not carrying the full weight of cybersecurity across an organization. Because that's really heavy. We'll burn out. And as Kevin was talking about, we do lose people. It's not always to a massive company. How would I define cybersecurity? I go right back to cybernetics. Cybernetics is a word that I love. A system that's made of lots of other systems. It's very complex. You have lots of different moving pieces. There's this idea of feedback loops. You have a rule, you take action on that rule, there's some outcome, and then that outcome feeds into the next steps. Cybersecurity really is strategic. You've got to have leadership and you've got to be able to measure and demonstrate value. There's an expectation that cybersecurity people need to have loads of deep areas of expertise. And I think it's more about how do you facilitate bring in other people's expertise and then take that responsibility as the expert to then do the technical work, do the deep dive and come up with these plans. Over the series, we've seen that interdisciplinary work is difficult. How do you think this translates to cybersecurity as a sector? One of the biggest challenges present is we are typically looking for solutions to what we believe is a predominantly technical problem. But in actual fact, a point that you just made, cybersecurity is a strategic problem um, within organizations. And there are certain things that practitioners need to be aware of and need to be able to manage and deal with within organizations. Business strategy and security, first and foremost, that is going to define exactly what your solution needs to look like. Practitioners need an understanding of what business strategy is, why it's important for an organization and why it's critical that it is led from the top, as it were, to help define the solutions that you're going to actually implement across an organization. The technology footprint is going to continue to grow and get ever more complex as we continue to develop technology at a breakneck pace that we are. The third real challenge with how this does translate to cyber as a sector is risk. Risk drives everything we do. We've come a long way since 2005 when these problems started to take center stage for businesses. We've now arrived at a place where we're considering more than just putting a firewall in place. It does present quite a challenging environment for cybersecurity practitioners moving forward, and it's something that we have to figure out how best to address. Building on that, it's taken a long time to get a real understanding of how to build technology that people can use right and can use to do their job. And cybersecurity really throws into sharp relief any shortcomings we have in understanding either how the technology works, how it might work when you've deployed it, but also how people are going to use it and how they're going to rely on it and how they're going to work around. You may have think you may think you've built a system that's going to be used in one way and people might well use it in another. In the absence of security problems, that's not really an issue as long as people are able to get their job done. But if the workaround introduces a point of weakness that somebody else might exploit, then suddenly all bets are off. One of the fascinating things about cybersecurity is it really shines a light on the gap between what we think we're doing and what we're actually doing. That makes it quite a challenge for a lot of disciplines because that means thinking about how the technology works, thinking about whether the law is lined up with what we need to enforce, whether social practice and people's understanding, levels of comfort and trust, happiness in their work are lined up with what we think is actually going on. I agree with you there, Andrew. The technologies that are being created to make things as easy as possible is an increase in the work that cybersecurity practitioners have to do. When you tell everyone just point and click and we'll do the rest for you. And as you say, Andrew, if they then use that outside of the scope of the intended usage, it starts to introduce other risks and other potential problems as well. And it's an awful lot to keep track of. How do we prioritise? Louis, I know you were trying to use sound to help people filter what was going on. Overload and overwhelm is quite common. So how do we figure out what comes first and what to focus on? I really like what Andrew said about the CDT and it teaches people to kind of know what you don't know and know what perspective you need to bring in. There was a lot of talking to practitioners about what their needs are and what the issues are that they face. Myself and another CDT student went and did lots of these interviews. So we did lots of kind of requirements gathering. And that's something that we've learned through the interdisciplinary course and through working closely with people who worked in fields like human computer interaction. That's a really valuable thing that we've learned and something that it's really important is out there in industry. In lots of cases it is, but it's something we can look to continue growing and find ways of facilitating these kinds of engagements between different groups that teaches people this is a gap 
that could be filled by working with someone over here or by considering this perspective? One of the things that we have to think about there is developing accessible cybersecurity technologies for the practitioners. They're not all going to be tech whizzes. Some of them are going to be more focused in and around strategy, which is absolutely imperative to help inform everyone else within that space. The earlier we start to consider interdisciplinary requirements for the cyberspace, the better prepared we can make students as they are coming through the various different schooling systems and getting up into the universities where they start to figure out where they want to specialise. We definitely struggle with interdisciplinary work. There's a number of 21st century challenges that need an interdisciplinary approach. Cybersecurity is one. Climate change is another. Climate change needs somebody to understand the physics of the climate. It also needs to understand the economics of, of changing energy sources, the impacts of climate change upon agriculture, on societies, and a bunch of other disciplines around it in order to really make sense of where the best policy interventions are. And the same applies in cybersecurity. We need this incredibly rounded understanding. And yet our universities are still set up on a 19th century model of a bunch of faculties with walls around them. We do our best to stop the students from one faculty studying another, particularly in the UK system. In Oxford, we don't just gather people in faculties, we also gather them in a variety of other places with the goal of making sure that people don't sit in silos and ignore every other discipline. That doesn't make interdisciplinary work easy because people still get rewarded for publishing in traditional journals that are in a particular subject. They get career points for being in the center of their subject very often and you don't get rewarded very readily for working across the disciplines because it's very easy for work that crosses disciplines to look shallow from from the perspective of people who are in the core of the discipline and yet you need to integrate those insights across the disciplines in order to solve some of the some of the most difficult problems that's a really good point I've only been trying to publish things in the area of cybersecurity for eight years, but it's already feeling more open to interdisciplinary work than, than eight years ago. It feels like something that's slowly improving and there are more venues that have calls that include interdisciplinary field that I've been working on. It sometimes feels like to push for a really strong venue. If you're not firmly in one discipline, it's going to be more of a challenge. We knew that was going to be a problem for the CDT. I think the students have stepped up to the challenge incredibly well, but that doesn't mean we've solved it. Institutional structures are so deeply ingrained that even if you push at the boundaries for a while, it's very easy for them to snap back as, as soon as you stop. So we've got to keep pushing. And I really like the approach that Oxford is taking to this in using other disciplines to analyse and understand where we need to put some focus. Perhaps that is a discipline in itself that can be opened up to encourage students from other disciplines to come in and to figure out how we solve these problems, not just looking at technical problems that we typically find synonymous with cybersecurity. So there's a, an awful lot of work that can be done. Um, with the skill sets that you have, you can definitely start to lead the way in thinking about education for a cybersecurity practitioner. Another challenge that I've personally noticed coming from an outside discipline or not one of the, what we might think traditionally as one of the core disciplines involved in cybersecurity, is that there's a real challenge around having a shared language, shared lexicon across disciplines, across law, policy, psychology, which all feed into cybersecurity. Slightly different definitions of very similar terms can lead to confusion. Having a common vocabulary around cybersecurity across disciplines is something I think that we, both in industry and in academia, need to, to work on to be more consistent and ease communication. We have talked about how cybersecurity presents challenges. What is the goal? To reduce the risk of a successful compromise of your business, of your technology, or people who rely on that technology. We cannot stop these things from happening. Technology continually evolves on a daily basis, sometimes from minute to minute. As a result, we are never going to be able to create a 100% secure system. We have to face up to the fact that cybersecurity is about the reduction of risk. It's about minimizing the impact that these events could possibly have. The way in which we do that is by learning from what we've already seen. Other events that have taken place, looking at the impact across the organisation, but also the end users who we're trying to protect. We often, unfortunately, don't see that.
an important goal is that it should be there to let us reap benefits that all these processes and systems that we use every day have the potential to bring. There's so much potential to make more efficient cities with smart cities and to improve the way we do medicine and help solve global issues like food shortages with the potential to instrument farming. We need the security in place to let that happen. And if we don't get the security right that underlies all that, then actually it has more and more potential to go very badly wrong the bigger the impact it could have. We're starting to see the potential for all these harms that you didn't really have the potential to create. As we start to link up transports and manufacturing systems, there's more potential to create physical harms and harms that actually really badly impact people. An important goal of cybersecurity is getting it right so that we can have that benefit that we're trying to build. Getting it right is very difficult in the current climate. With the skill shortage that we have, As a cyber threat intelligence company, we are continually monitoring and looking at the emerging threats in this space, not just to the technology, but the business as well. We we ourselves are often looking to recruit developers, skilled individuals. One of the more recent scams that we have witnessed is uh, people taking advantage of this skill shortage. We're, We're starting to see skills as a service emerging, so almost a cloud version of cybersecurity skills. But the problems that we face there are pretty much in and around trust. We've witnessed a number of cases where developers that are being provided for hire on ad hoc projects, developers take these roles on and then using access that they're provided to compromise the security of those organizations, planting malware and planting ransomware in some cases. To to look at the goal of cybersecurity, you've got to look at the overall development of a technological society. We are connecting more and more people together. We're connecting more and more things together with the goal of making us happier, feeding more people, using fewer fossil fuels, and a bunch of other things that seem to be good for society. The downside is the more connections you make, the more opportunity there is for anything from mischief to straightforward theft, and scarily somewhere in the background to existential risk, whether it's to an organization or even to a, to a country. The goal of somehow is to enable us to have those technological benefits. The goodness, being able to get a job on the other side of the planet is probably very good for a lot of people, but without introducing small scale harms and certainly without introducing the existential risks Sometimes you look at the technologies and the way people use them and you wonder whether we get scarily close to scenarios better as movie plots than as as the real world. And the goal is to keep us out of the movie plot world and in the world that makes people happier, healthier, wealthier and so on. I like this vision, but I think there are practicalities and realities where we don't enable everyone and we're not feeding everyone. And at the end of the day, people come to work to do a job. I see the role, one of the roles of cybersecurity experts as being the people who have to translate. They have to make it relevant. They have to figure out what motivates people. Kevin, I think you're right. It has to come from the top. It has to. That's where the money is. And that's where the pull has to be. But I read reports that tell me boards don't understand. They think it's important, but don't know where to start. There are toolkits for how you communicate with the board to get that imperative for the cybersecurity work. Perhaps it is about taking the ego out of it, where we have a rock star mentality, but we're in cyber and it's very shiny. It's very new. We're going to make the UK the most secure place, best place to do business. At the end of the day, we need as many eyes out there as possible. For me, that's, I'm not sure it's the goal, but it's a method that we don't talk about enough. How do we get more eyes? How do we get people reporting, you know, not creating their own workarounds because hacking works both ways. It can be bad, but it can be really useful if something just gets in your way. You figure out a way to work the system that makes your your job a bit easier. Absolutely. And the the board level still is too reactionary in the UK and abroad as well. They all sit there and think, well, it's happening out there, but this isn't happening to us or this hasn't happened to us. So why should we make the investments? And they are considerable investments that we're talking about here. Companies are asking themselves, why should we make these investments to do this? Can we not just offload this to some third party and uh, get rid of the responsibility ourselves? Unfortunately, we're seeing far too many boards of organisations taking that approach still. So that brings us back to interdisciplinary study. Whilst there are some things that we can clearly do that will improve our cybersecurity, the evidence base is lacking overall. I could say that the senior management of the university is very exercised about this subject. If I want to give them advice about what they should do to make the university a safer place, I could tell them to triple the budget of the central cybersecurity unit, 
But deciding which is the good and which is the bad advice is often not backed by evidence, perhaps because we've got an immature science, perhaps because the question's just too hard. Simple example, a lot of people are told that password safes are a good idea. Lots of media articles are much more conflicted on whether the password manager built into your browser is a good idea or not. There are arguments both ways. As a scientist who I think understands the issues quite well, I'm not sure I could tell you hand on heart which will actually tangibly reduce your risk more because there's a lot of contextual factors that go with it. As a scientist, that's a problem. I think we've teased out a better answer for the goal of cybersecurity. The goal has to be to educate everyone to the risks so that they can act and respond accordingly. You have to educate everyone across the business. Janitors that have email addresses, they need to be educated to the risks of using those, of clicking on the links that could potentially target them. These things will slip through the net. The added you're only as strong as your weakest link is never more prevalent than in technology. We use educate the users a lot to absolve ourselves from responsibility. The cleaner needs to clean. And ultimately, it's the organization's responsibility to follow up on that, have some measurement force going on. And rather than punishing this person if they get got by a phishing attempt, instead of having this punishment approach, it's having this, oh, okay, right. Well, because we've had whatever training, you know what phishing looks like and you've done it. And it's trying to get rid of this shame. One of the issues with cybersecurity training in organizations is it's completely irrelevant. You cannot have a one-size-fits-all approach because your HR board is not going to have the same motivations as junior software developers. There's just different people who have different priorities. That's one of the fundamental, complex things that we have to tussle with. You're absolutely right there. If the user that gets fished, it's not their fault. That in itself is an example of a failure of the organization to properly prepare their security strategy. If the end user's are being successfully fished, then they're not providing them with the right information to understand that these things are happening. I was going to say exactly the same. If your business relies on the clean and not clicking on the wrong link, then there's something wrong with your business. Your business does rely on the clean and not putting bleach in the kitchen supplies dispenser. We know how to manage that risk, what we think we do most of the time, but the cleaner shouldn't be expected to do tasks that belong to the IT department, say. And we've got to be clear on that. We, uh, as you've all said, we can't just assume that training people is the solution. We've got to grasp the technology and use it right and not simply assume that giving everyone a multi-purpose, multi-program device that connects to every other device on the internet is a safe or straightforward thing to do. Or feasible or cheap. Just one thing to, to add is the a goal of cybersecurity is to shift focus somewhat and put more emphasis on the end user. Organizations and businesses are the key focus for a substantial amount of the cybersecurity sector. But traditionally, the impact on end users is still very much when there is a breach, tends to be an afterthought or a secondary harm, which is not necessarily prioritized perhaps shifting focus more to the impact on end users as well as the organizations which are tasked with storing and protecting or controlling their data would help shift perspective to a more interdisciplinary and holistic view and provide better insights into how to specifically avoid situations like the cleaner getting fished or someone who simply doesn't think in the context of their job or in the context of their everyday life about the cybersecurity ramifications of the technology that they use and have access to. One more thought there, cybersecurity awareness training has become ubiquitous in business and even in the university, I think. But if that's any use at all, it can only be the baseline. What we actually need are people who make decisions to have a much deeper understanding of the implications of the decisions they make. Cybersecurity in decision making, in design of new facilities and services and products and so on, needs to follow. The interdisciplinary approach needs to go much deeper into the training of every profession, not merely the don't click on bad links kind of advice. It's very important that we look at where this is all going, where this is going to be in three or five years when we're thinking about what skills we need, what engagement we need, which disciplines we need to be working with. What we build and create now is what's going to be used when 
there will be a different landscape. We're talking about the need to train cybersecurity people to engage in the right ways, ensure that the organisation is doing the right thing and employees aren't relied on things they shouldn't be. This will move so fast. And in terms of research, industry and policy, there needs to be this forward-looking aspect in terms of what training we do now and what, what engagement we facilitate. Join us next week for another fascinating conversation. In the meantime, you can tweet at us at HelloPTNPod, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. The title there is PTN Pod. See you next week. Bye. This has been a podcast from the Center for Doctoral Training in Cybersecurity at the University of Oxford, funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council.